by a show of hands, you ever feel as though your fear of judgment is inhibiting you from going after the things that could possibly make you feel most fulfilled? You ever feel like maybe you've got this fear of failing before your peers and being ridiculed that holds you back from going after the things that might make you happier than anything else in the world? You do too? I thought I was the only one. All right, well, thanks for watching. My name is Romney Malco and welcome to another episode of Advice from a Jackass. This has been a pretty hot topic on the PEP as of late. People talking about what they would do, what they would pursue if it weren't for the fear of judgment. And I wanted to share some of my own advice because I definitely have lived my life in fear. And then I had an aha moment that helped to liberate me from the overall fear of judgment. Now, granted, Part of that aha moment has to do with age. As you get older, you just care less about what other people have to say. But another part of it has to do with realizing that a lot of the fear is self-imposed. So what I'm gonna try to do is, I'm gonna try to give you five key things that I know that I've done in my life to help me overcome the fear of judgment and allow me to pursue the things that matter most to me. Okay, the first thing that helped me in reducing my fear of judgment was simply devoting myself to a cause that was greater than just me. So meaning I came across a sense of purpose, meaning I felt really passionate about providing a service to a community of people who grew up like me, who were miseducated like me, and I wanted to find a way to help put them on the path that I was put on that enabled me to feed myself, feed my family, and feel good about the work that I do. And that one thing, simply devoting myself to solving a problem in the world or in the community helped. Just knowing that you're helping people people really, really helps your self-esteem, but it also helps your mental health. There are scientific studies, there are case studies, which I will talk about later on the PEP, that show that simply doing things for others makes you feel happy. It makes you feel healthier. The endorphin rushes and the satisfaction that you get from it contributes to your confidence. And that would be step number one. I'm going to explain this much more in depth in a little bit because we're going to sum this all up. Number two, another thing that helped me to reduce my fear of ridicule and judgment was making sure that that purpose that we spoke about, making sure that mission meant more to me than any ridicule that I might have to endure. And it's a great segue into number three. The third thing that really helped to reduce my fear of judgment was to simply stop judging myself and to stop judging others. The fear of being wrong or the fear of failing is a condition that is developed through shaming. Maybe you grew up in an environment where you saw people being ridiculed for being wrong or for making mistakes, or you saw people not being forgiven for making mistakes, or maybe you yourself was ridiculed or convinced to believe that you were not worthy or that you were not enough because you made mistakes. Have you ever heard the saying that children tend to lie when their parents overreact to to problems? Well, it's kind of the same condition. When we see people overreacting or being incredibly insulting towards people who've made mistakes, we fear being judged or looking stupid. And as a result of that, we often don't ask questions that can provide answers that can often get us onto the path of the things that we truthfully want to do, the things that we're most passionate about, the things that we could be most effective at, or the things that make us the happiest. But the reason I mention judgment is because the lens through which we view the world is how we think we are viewed by the world. It's almost impossible to differentiate. We're human. We don't swap lenses like cameras do. We are programmed to believe that our outlook is mirrored by the world. We will even go to extremes to surround ourselves with people who complement our outlook, who complement our philosophies, our theories, our beliefs, and then we will call those people our tribe. But the sad thing is, is quite often what we are calling a tribe is really just a group of enablers. So we sit stuck in our mental prison side by side with our tribe of enablers pointing out all the problems in the world, but never really attempting to solve any of those problems because we, my tribe of enablers, fear that we will be judged in the same way that we are judging others. If you look at people from a place of prejudice, you believe that people are looking at you from a place of prejudice. If you look at people from a place of harsh, 
critical judgment. You believe that you are being looked at in the exact same way. So, okay, stop judging others. It's so easy to say, stop judging yourself. So easy to say, but how do you get that done? Well, for me, one of the biggest breakthroughs of all occurred when I was going through my divorce. I married a young lady and in going through our divorce, I had been exposed. And one of the things that I saw about myself that I didn't like was that I was actually hiding. And what was it that was making me hide? Number four is what was making me hot. I was being so judgmental of the world that I felt as though the standards that I was holding other people to, I think I feared that people were trying to hold me to those standards as well. And one of the most liberating things I could do, which happened right at my divorce, was that I decided that I was just gonna pull back and just lower my expectations of other people by about 99%. And the minute I did that, it felt like a weight was off of my shoulders. And in doing so, it really helped over the years, it helped to mold my perspective. And I don't walk around thinking that people are holding me to any super high expectation either. And so by lowering my expectations of people by 99%, all of a sudden, there was no one to blame but me. And I'm telling you something right now about alleviating blame. The minute I was able to stop blaming other people was the minute I could take responsibility for 100% of my life. And that led me onto a path of a whole different education about how I go about pursuing the things that I want and how I go about navigating the world. And I really want to emphasize that this is not advice from a guru. This is advice from a jackass. This is from someone who's made all of these mistakes. In fact, I still make these mistakes. Not as much as I did 10, 20 years ago, but from time to time, I still have to check myself on this stuff. I made an entire movie about this. It's called Prison Logic. It stars me, Regina Hall, Tammy Roman, Alcoye Brunson. Um, it's about a guy who gets out of prison and wants to be a life coach and he has to learn all this stuff all over again. If you're interested in seeing this movie, if you're interested in being on the early viewing list, we call it the early hawk list, all you gotta do is go to prisonlogic.com. I promise you, it's funny as hell. Let's get back on topic, but again, it's prisonlogic.com if you are at all interested. All right, now, let's move into number five. The fifth thing that really helped liberate me is so simple, but it's probably one of the most important, and that was coming to the realization that it's not just about me. In fact, it might not be about me at all. Maybe you have people in this world or a community in this world that you connect with. And maybe you have an idea or you can put yourself onto a mission that helps those people. Are you going to let your fear of being criticized and looking bad compromise the potential help and love and healing that you can bring to this huge community of people? I don't know. And if you are that brother, A, that's you. But for me, for this brother right here, there's no way in the world I'm going to let my ego take precedence over the potential of healing an entire community or over the potential of just healing one child. So let's recap what we got here. Number one, devote yourself to solving a problem in your community or a problem in the world. Devote yourself to it. That pulls the focus off of you and that really does help you to take focus off of all these naysayers and take focus off of yourself. Number two, whatever problem you decide to devote yourself to solving, you got to make sure that it is a mission that is more important to you than any criticism that you could potentially face. That is absolutely key. Don't just choose a problem. It really has to mean something to you. There's all kinds of problems, you know what I mean? Some people are all about saving dogs and some people that tell them, well, it's all about saving humans. But the people that are saying it's all about saving humans ain't saving nobody. You get what I'm saying? So choose something that means everything to you. Maybe it's something that you've been through in your life. For instance, for me, I was raised in a community where poverty equated to ignorance. Meaning if you were poor, you were not afforded a good education. Simple as that. And so you were misinformed. You were radically indoctrinated on the topics of health, finance, and food. And so I'm extremely passionate about not just, you know, re-educating myself in those topics, but sharing what I learn with the world. Number three, you got to stop judging yourself. You got to stop judging others. That's it. I know I can get long-winded about this stuff, but ultimately the lens through which you choose to view the world is the same lens you believe that you are being viewed through by the world. Judgment is a double-edged sword. Number four, lower your expectations of people 99%.
That's right. Low it 99%. That expectation of people. Because you're holding people to a standard that's quite often unrealistic. And as a result of that, you believe you're being held to the same standard. So now, when you lower that standard, you liberate yourself to see what you had actually made of. It doesn't happen overnight. But with time, you condition yourself to be like, okay, let me stop expecting as much of people. And what ends up happening is, is that people tend to give you some pretty pleasant surprises. People do come through. There are good people out there. And... If you're the kind of person who is extremely emotional, quite often, if you are having these high expectations, you're basically setting yourself up for hurt. You get what I'm saying? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying you get with somebody and just expect them to cheat on you. No, there is a level of discernment and balance that comes with, you know, with the partners you choose. But when I say lower your expectations of people by 99%, I think that what I'm really trying to articulate here is that we have an overall expectation of people to live up to a standard that we are not holding ourselves to. Get rid of that need to expect of people and simply set the example you'd like to see. Cliche as it sounds, it helped me grow up. Number five, realize that it is no longer about you. The priority is now about what you contribute to the community the problems you solve, the children you raise and educate, and the difference you make in the world. Coincidentally, these are the things that actually make us whole and helps to check the ego that usually tears us down. Now, let me give you a bonus. I got a bonus for you. And this was me, boy. I'm a Scorpio. I think the fact that I just said Scorpio pretty much tells you what I'm gonna say next. Let go. Let go. Yo, man, I'm good at holding grudges. I grew up holding grudges. The kind of grudge that I would hold. I would hold grudges so tight, I would cut off my own circulation. Facts. Like, seriously. And subconsciously, I think that the reason I was holding these grudges or needed to hold someone's fault over their head was so that I could feel better about myself. I'm dead serious. Now, of course, this is a couple of decades ago, but nonetheless, it's a reflection of a community that I came from. There was this illusion of being righteous if I could telegraph someone else's faults. And so as a result of that, holding grudges, it just helped to play into this idea that I was high and mighty or that need to believe that I was better than someone. And man, let me tell you something. Letting go, number six, letting go, the bonus track, really changed the game. It really changed the game. I've got this written out in a nice little checklist that you can keep on your phone as a daily reminder. If you would like to download that checklist, you can follow me at the pep and download it there. My name is Romney Malco, and that concludes another episode of Advice from a Jackass. Y'all take it easy. <laughs>